Good afternoon. How's everybody? Great, great, great. My name is um, Patizwe Malinga. I am the managing director of a company called Squidnet. We are an IoT company, but we'll get into that a little bit later. I would like to once again welcome everybody to Singularity University South Africa's Exponential Finance Summit on African soil. It's a very first and a very momentous occasion. And I think it's fitting because legend has it, um, Africa is the birthplace of double entry accounting. <laughs> you guys laugh, I, the faith you have. It really is. Um, if I was to guess, I would have said Mesopotamia, but I discovered, no, it was actually Africa. Mesopotamia is the birthplace of the wheel. Um, it's, in, it's invented stuff like the sailboat. They even did astronomy. Um, and, and the list of the number of things that they've even invented goes on. Okay, uh, <laughs> my slides are jumping forward on their own. Apologize about that. Um, they also invented counting. If you look at your hand um, without your thumb, most of you will probably for the first time recognize that you have 12 knuckles. And that's what Mesopotamia did. They invented that first counting system um, using all of your knuckles. It's a very, very inventive place. But in Africa, um, we needed more than just counting. We also needed accounting. You know, we were worried about stock. We, we love our kettle. And we needed to come up with a way of counting um, our kettle. So if you think about a head boy in the morning, um, the story goes that in the morning when they would take all of their cows out of the cow, out of the cow buyer, cow enclosure into the, into the fields, they would have a pouch on them and they would pick up these little stones and they would put a stone into the pouch for every single cow that left that crawl. And then, of course, out in the pasture, in old Africa, like old England, old Africa. And then in the evening, they'd come back, and as the cows would enter into, into the kraal, they would then remove one stone. And if any stone was left, that means the cow was missing. Right? So that's how they invented double-entry accounting. I don't lie much, so you've got to believe me, right? <laughs> um, and, and cows are very important to, to, to Africa and also to places like India. They're actually worshipped in India as the mother of life. In Africa and in India, they are so important, in fact, that they are given um, during a wedding as dowry if you're in India or given as lobola if you are in, in Africa. And they're kind of like a, a measure of value, a, a sign of wealth. And the cow is generally a sign, a, a sign of wealth throughout, throughout the world. And one can argue that, that this dowry is, 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 is a gift of gratitude. Um, it can also be a sign of consensus between the two families um, to say that this son of mine is marrying this daughter of yours and therefore these two families are now combined forever. So it is in, inextricably interwoven, just like that statement, inextricably interwoven into our culture. Um, it is a reflection of our values. Um, so much so that anybody who comes um, onto our shores um, gets to hear about, about our Lobola tradition. I want to um, give you a video that just shows how deeply entrenched um, Lobola and the giving of kettle is um, from this video. Sir, I want to spend the rest of my life with Tandy. I love her. And I brought the Lobola here to prove it. What's this? It's the kettle. 
You said 50, right? When others don't make sense, we do. You got the one-year warranty. But this is forever. <laughs> um, that's, a, that's a great South African humor, I think it is. Playing the interplay between the kettle and the kettle. And, and, and that is one of the challenges that we have in this modern era, right? Is um, these kettle, as, as great as, as they represent our culture, uh, are becoming very hard for us to give um, in, in weddings, especially with the migration into the cities that we now live in. Mobility is becoming much harder and harder. Um, a lot of us um, Africans are getting married every weekend, but you don't see a lot of us herding um, cattle down the N1, um, William Nickel, or Baal. <laughs> um, so, so over time, the value of the cow um, has been replaced by one of money. And that process has been brought into the, to the Lobola negotiations. And so the two families sit down and they come up with a fairly descriptive um, number if, if, if these cost so much in your area, cost so much in my area, we agree on a number and then we replace that to the rest of our, our kettle. And, and from that, um, you start getting interesting phrases being introduced into the lexicon of Lobola negotiations, um, like a phrase called um, um, and that directly translated would be a pocket cow. And that kind of gives a whole new meaning to pocket money, right? Um, so, so subjectivity then comes about with money. Where it was very easy for us to tell the value of, of a cow, it becomes a bit tricky um, to tell the value of, of money if you're an 18-year-old who's planning to start a family a couple of years from now. And then money itself is instable. Um, when you look at money, the macroeconomic factors that influence the value of money cannot be shifted by even our country or our continent, let alone be it swayed by an individual who wants to, um, sorry, <laughs> an individual who wants to affect that value of money, right? So, so it's so material um, that, that we need to, we need to take um, control of, of money itself. The Lobola discussion in our country and in the continent rages so much that, that it even starts to spill over because of the subjectivity into now we're valuing women or devaluing women, reducing the bride price, if you want to call it, um, now down to something that we can bargain around. So society is constantly questioning, is this Lobola even relevant? And in that world, beyond the tradition, what I notice is that our culture is evolving. The things that we take very dear, things like our values, are in an evolutionary state. So then I ask myself, in a world where, where we see our culture changing, how do we protect our values? How do we restore our value as an African people, let alone how do we increase the value of these values, especially if it's something like money that we really can't control. You know, the old adage that if America sneezes, the whole world catches a cold. That affects us. But in terms of cows, we know how to grow the cows. We know how to do this very well. We've got farmers who have been doing this um, for a while. We can see in things like the birth of a, a calf, we can look at the hereditary quality, you know, what it eats is reflected in the coat of its skin, so we are able to control the value of cattle, and we know how to increase it. So when I think about the future of Africa and I think about these exponential technologies that we have coming in our direction, I ask myself, how can we then challenge ourselves from a thought point of view? How can we use exponential technology to start influencing something that is important as our culture or our tradition?
How do we preserve the African way or preserve value in a modern era? And so I think about the conversations tomorrow that I think we can start introducing our, our, our parents can start having with us, conversations that we can start having with our children. And I imagine an African father walking up to his son and saying, my son, you are now 16. Take this here calf, raise it well. Show a woman in the future that you are a responsible boy. Multiply my calf. <laughs> and, and it's very possible, but the problem is, is, is one of the situations that I painted was in the city, we don't have a place to receive these calves. So where is our young African going to receive his, his calves, let alone raise his calves? So what I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce you to three exponential technologies that exist today that can change this bird's and the bee's story into one that is probably real. The first technology that I want to talk about is very dear to my heart. That's what our company does. And that is the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things is a technology that combines what I traditionally say is four components, which is generally the application, the back end, connectivity, and the device. You put all of those, three, those four things together and you get the Internet of Things. So we need an application that we can see on our phones. Um, it needs to connect to a back end, which is out in the cloud. And then we need a way, just like our phones connect to the internet, we need a way to connect to these devices that we will put against a asset. And in our case right now, the asset is of course our young African's calf or cow. This technology allows for somebody who is not close by to this animal to monitor it remotely. You're able to start to see its vital signs. The collar that it has around its neck is called a digit animal. And um, that green part over there, that's the sensor. From that sensor, we're able to tell if that cow is pregnant or not. We're able to tell exactly where that cow is. We're able to tell if it's healthy in terms of its vital signs. And we're actually even able to tell when it moves. So that means that our young African can outsource the growing of his calf into many cows. He can outsource this to a farmer who already has this wisdom. And that farmer can use the very same asset and will assume that our farmer is not doing this for our young man, um, but many. And, and he can view them on a map, all of these, a digital representation of his cattle. And from this digital representation, he can even create a virtual fence around them that should any of those cattle go past that fence, he gets a notification and our young African also gets a notification because this can mean he wants to be involved in the raising of his value. But where on earth is our young African man going to find our farmer? And that's where I wanna introduce you to our second exponential technology. There is a company in South Africa, it is the birth child of a guy called Ntutugo Shezi. It trades right now livestock wealth. You are able to, on a stock exchange, invest in a cow and trade actual real life cows. So we can marry that first exponential technology to this um, um, technology, the second technology over here. I'll show you a picture of Ntutugo Shezi here who was a little bit excited about winning the SABC Innovation Award. So this means that we can take this concept of a stock exchange, which is really about stock, no pun intended, and we can attach to that the ability, as Amin spoke about earlier on, to leverage the network effect. So now not only am I investing in cows, I can now start finding farmers. 
specific farmers who have a past experience in raising um, cattle on behalf of others. And, and you can, on this exchange, start creating things like initial public offerings when a farmer whose performance um, outstrips the rest has a cow that is pregnant, um, you can start creating a, a, a much higher value calf as it gets listed. Today in Tutugoshes, it does trade pregnant cows at a higher value than, than normal cows. So now we've got a way to digitally represent our, our cow remotely for our young African, and we have a farmer who is willing to, to raise this, this um, value for our young farmer. That brings me to our third exponential technology that I'd like to talk about. Um, if we do all of this but are still constrained by money, something that we can't control as we know it today, currency as we know it now, um, then we have almost solved the problem but kind of gone back to zero. So, so what we can do in this world is introduce blockchain and cryptocurrency. Now, Tanya Knowles will do a far better job of introducing this to you tomorrow. But suffice to say, what I love, the two variables when it comes to um, something like um, cryptocurrency, is it's about trust and it's about value. This distributed ledger gives us the ability to, to have visibility and therefore a little bit more control over the value that we create or that our farmer generates. These logos that you see on the screen right now are existing cryptocurrencies that are dedicated to agriculture. But because we're African, I think we can stretch a little bit further and create our own cryptocurrency. I'm a fan of calling our new cryptocurrency moolah. You know, because moolah is like slang for, for money and then moo, right? <laughs> but with this... Um, currency, it can allow for the farmer to start buying things like hay that our cows will eat, because in my head, cows only eat hay. They can pay for, for veterinary services, and they can do it in a way that is also trackable on, on, on this blockchain, a way that we have end-to-end -end visibility about what value was put into um, our, our cows, and we have an a value growth um, that we can see and trade off um, in Tutugo Shezi's livestock wealth stock exchange. Back to IoT, so it's not the fourth exponential technology, it's still IoT. What IoT does for us is it gives us the ability um, to give our young African a opportunity to take part in the raising of his, and of his, his um, livestock. In the picture over there, exactly like we spoke about the ABCD, we've got the device and it, it, it sends that off into the cloud and lands up into this big data. And we heard Benji and Ashley tell us earlier on about artificial intelligence and big data. And what this does is it gives us the opportunity um, to dive into all of this data that we've gathered around our animal or our animals and apply algorithms and look for patterns and look for some kind of meaningful insight that can be actionable either by the owner of this um, livestock being that they traded on the stock exchange or actionable by the farmer that has been outsourced to raise um, this animals. And so with those technologies in place today, I think we can, in a context of South Africa and Africa, start to create companies like this one. Liquid is a Japanese company and it just raised funding and has become the latest unicorn in Silicon Valley. A unicorn in Silicon Valley um, is a description used by the tech industry to say that a company has been valued at over one billion US dollars. Liquid is 
a blockchain stock exchange company. So not only is this possible, it's commercial and it's happening today. So I think, when I think about the most traditional of traditional things, which is Lobola, we can use technology and exponential technologies to start thinking a little bit differently about our Africa and our African values. Technology gives us the opportunity to be nostalgic, yet future-facing. It gives us a chance for us to future-proof Africa in a way that we've never had a chance to before. So, thank you very much. <laughs>